Sixteen. What's happening? It's his birthday. Ah. So I am currently doing uh, tryhards. I can't explain it. I can't explain why, but I just can't do it. We started the episode, I think, in November of 2022, and I wrote down all the plans for it, um, but then when it came to doing it, I just couldn't. Eddie and Elliot did their tries, and we even filmed the wrap-up, and I, I was like, okay, I, I gotta, I'll do mine next week, and that was 10 months ago, and it's so fucking weird. When I was like, 15 or 16 I had this suit jacket and a bunch of scar band patches and one of my aunts sewed them on to the jacket for me I had I just had all I had to do was thank her and I just couldn't and just the guilt of that just kept building and it was just I was completely paralyzed apparently this is something called executive dysfunction but there are points when it's like oh you just got to pick up those three pieces of clothes off the floor and put them in and I can't it sounds insane to try and explain but i just can't sweet summer child a bottle of bod, bo bottle and of a bud. sock someone had a party in this car there were these three lovely months when i was on adhd medication during the pandemic and i felt focused and productive and capable and then all of a sudden they started giving me these really vicious panic attacks or anxiety attacks actually and I came off them, and it's just it's just been real bad ever since. But when I went to the doctor's to ask if they'd put me on a different one, they said that I had to speak to a specialist, and that would take a really long time, so... No! And don't ask why I camped it up a bit. You camped it up a bit? A little bit. I don't know why. My ranty, my gay side's my ranty side. You got a gay side? I'm a bisexual, Tom. No! I don't know what any of the fuck this means. What the fuck does any of this mean? What is any- What does any of this mean? Okay, cool. Company that meets ownership and base erosion test. Part C, is that- That's gotta be the end, right? Yeah, that's it. Good, because I could fit maybe the word the. Alright, let me just- let me just sit down. Just mind my business. I'm not making eye contact. I'm going to put down my beer. Everything that? is fine. And now I'll go, hello puppy! Oh. <laughs> no! She looks like an old Scottish man, just like ever. You have so much hate in your heart. Beautiful girly. Okay, if, the, if you're just like this all the time, we're fine. Oh, there it is! You son of a bitch! Time to call this. Hi, I was trapped with me. <laughs> All right, let's freaking go. This is such a funny shot. Here's the background we will be green screened on too. <laughs> Once more onto the breach, eh lads? So Elliot's here to film the wrap up of Try Hards. Elliot. We'll be here. Off you go. It was nice knowing you. Get in the skip. Whoa. We're going to play test our game. Press it. <laughs> Thanks. How come? And we're going to pre-sign some Try Hards posters. So it's a little busy day. Oh god, Elliot, sign the posters faster! I'm trying! Oh. Don't stick to the script. What's happening? Oh, you're talking about... I'm shit-talking. Oh my god! <laughs> no! Uh, maybe it should be that I get a point if I... Don't make me fail. Maybe I do keep the points if you didn't do it. Wait, yeah. Do we, do we have points? Play testing! Correctly guess which player has currently gone the longest without sex. Me! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yes! Play a second timer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. So you, I had a great plan. What was the great plan? Were yeah. you going to try and hide in there? Pink was on the sofa. Yeah. And I was going to like lay next to him with the blanket over me. We kind of like it was just her, basically. I feel like we would identify yeah, probably, a six foot two she did move, uh, that, that, guy. That, that worked, but... Damn it, Pink. I don't want to do any of these. <laughs> Oh, 
When there was still a chance that Elliot was going to edit the September last month, I promised him that I would save all the mushy stuff for October so that he wouldn't have the uncomfy experience of editing me talking about him. And now here we are. Please, you're working with your pal. Oh, fuck me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did that actually hurt or did yeah, you come? Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. The video has just come out. He's posted his statement and yesterday he started his new job. And I find myself in a strange position where I want to talk about it and I want to get into the mushy stuff, but I also don't want to perform, you know, reminisce and work myself up and shed a tear for camera. But I'm very grateful for the time him and I had together. The friendship and the creative partnership. And while, you know, we still hope to maintain a friendship, it will be a different one. You know, it won't be like it's been for the past nine and a half years where I speak to him near enough every day. It, it'll be uh, something that we have to manually upkeep and check in and catch up. And I hope I don't fuck it up. I'm not great at holding on to friendships. This, is, this really is a reminiscent uh, day, isn't it? It's a real trip down memory lane. <laughs> it's 2016 all over again. I used to really struggle with endings when friendships and relationships and partnerships came to a close I would put up a wall and put it all out of my mind I'd take pictures of them down and before long I found myself living in an environment where I wouldn't put up pictures of anyone because I was scared that I would have to take them down again and how much that would hurt I was in my Look at him. <laughs> but a few years ago, I started to reevaluate my relationship with loss and grief and closure. And with that, I started to put the pictures back up and appreciate that even if something ends, it still mattered. The moments you spent together, the secrets you shared, the love you had. What, what wonderful adventures we get to hear at home. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> they all still happen and that can't be taken away. So I've got photos on my wall of people that have ended up becoming enemies, but I can still happily look at their face because the present doesn't undo the past. What's the, what's the last line from Blackadder? Well, uh, the, the last line, you know the one. Well, it's like good luck boys or something. Yeah, like it's something like that. Yeah. And what I'm saying here obviously isn't just about Elliot. Uh, to be clear, I am reminiscing about friendships, relationships, partnerships as a whole. I'm trying to extract some value from the emotions I'm feeling. Derive some poignancy, as it were. Make it useful, constructive, productive, you know? But thank you for everything, Elliot. We had some times, didn't we? I mean, what... What the hell is this? So last night, Pink ran downstairs at about 1 a.m. out into the garden, barking her little head off, and then she came back in, but didn't come back upstairs. When I finally came down to investigate, the first thing I hear is this clacking sound, which is a very distinct sound of a dog chewing on a bone, at which point I find her, well, chewing on a bone, but quite a big one with meat on it that has nothing to do with us. Hi, Minky. Oh fuck, it's warm. It's October. It's fucking October, dude. Fuck off. We gotta clean this fucking office. So I try not to weigh into politics too much. Obviously I'm very socially progressive, so I will be vocal about that. But when it comes to actual like governmental stuff, I don't say all that much. But I recently took to Twitter to call out uh, my government on their actions and what I think they're currently doing, which is after 13 years of what I believe to be putting us in a far worse place uh, economically. They're now just trying to go, oh yeah, but like trans people, right? That's, can we, can you all get mad about that actually and ignore all the stuff we've been doing? An embarrassing amount of people replied to me saying like, you should stay out politics. What do you know about the economy? I am the fucking economy. I am a tax paying homeowner, business owner. I 
work in trade, have goods produced uh, in the UK that I sell. I employ dozens of people um, here and there across a number of different fields. I import things, I export things. I am the economy and I have noticed financial repercussions from the policies and actions and decisions of my government that I do not like. I do not agree with them on all the social and the, the, the woke stuff. But also, like, economically and financially, I don't agree with them. So, like, maybe you shut up, actually. I, I have a vested interest in this, and I think I can talk about politics, because they affect me. Ugh. <laughs> so I'm meeting up with a friend I haven't seen in a while, and today was the day that I decided to go full cowboy. I uh, got my boots on, I got my little gilet thing on, and I was even wearing my cowboy hat. And then she told me where we were going, and it was to a fully vegan restaurant. And most of those clothes are leather, and I decided that I would not do that out of respect, and so that no vegans try to fight me. There's no creme in my creme brulee. <laughs> What are you made of? I've got no problem with vegans. Three of the last four women I've dated have been somewhere on the vegan to vegetarian scale. So, I'm used to it. And those motherfuckers can hit. Say it again. There's no cheese in my cheesecake. Oh no. I woke up this morning and I went to trim my beard. Something went wrong with the trimmer. And I genuinely mean this, it wasn't my fault. But like the blade just dropped and just took a chunk off my beard, which I had to like, even out. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm very close to shaving my head. If I didn't have like four conventions back to back, I would do it. But I think over winter, I'm probably gonna shave my head. Cause it's a good look, I suit it, you know? It's a strong look for me. I'm genuinely quite upset about my mustache. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Oh, what the fuck? I, 52 pounds a month? Fuck, that's 600 pounds a year. Just to be able to have these programs? Someone's gotta die. I've been invited to a Halloween party and I've got to figure out what to wear. Oh, so many and all I have access to is the endless abyss that is my prop and costume shed. There's stuff in there that I have bought seconds of because I cannot be bothered to try and find it. Wait, it's fucked. What's this? Is this anything? I'm a knight, but it's like he was in bed. He ya, he ya. This looks fucking stupid. I, I used to be an adventurer like you, uh, and then I got syphilis. Hey, Tom. Don't do it again. <laughs> this is how you know you've arrived to a really fucking lit party. You're just tired, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> we'll just explode in you. <laughs> what is this? I don't. I don't like this. Oh, man. There's nothing scarier than this. The wizards did 9 11, and it was just a cover up. That's pretty scary. Ah, uh, Jake, you've come as uh, Dan and Phil. <laughs> Get vlogged, idiot. Look! This is illegal! You're consuming an alcohol! Oh. Everyone is gonna know! I don't like any of that. I wish that was over. Bone, Bone boy! <laughs> they thought you were trustworthy, but really you're just another disgusting degenerate. You're gonna say something racist on YouTube, but like, in a really sultry way? I'm so fucking scared right now. No, it was Grindelwald's plan to stop the fucking Holocaust. Have you not seen the movies? Did they change that from the manga? Her sister was a witch! I said that too loudly! I'm literally filming a sign you need to calm down. <laughs> oh, are you filming? <laughs> <laughs> Jake, I didn't steal it. <laughs> Parallel thinking. Oh my god, you're all out of frame. I do not film people without consent anymore. What happened? Oh man, a hangover used to be directly proportional to how drunk I got. Now it's just like, oh, you drank some alcohol. Feel fucking bad about it, dude. Oh, don't get old. Just die. Why the fuck am I getting a haircut at 8 a.m.? This is awful.
I think I'm just gonna ask them to do whatever the fuck they feel like would look good and just see what happens. All right, got one of them newfangled modern cuts, taking it right down to the skin. I just, I don't care about my hair. Like it just, it grows so fast. I know I've got hair privilege, but I could shave the damn hair off and it'll come back in six weeks completely. So fuck it. If you, if you have the luxury, just fuck around with your hair. Do random shit with it. Don't get stuck into one style like I do. Go crazy. Check this shit out. I've come up with a system to display pins at MCM. However, I did order the pins a bit late. So there's a chance they might not show up. I think we've ordered like 1,500 or 2,000 pins. They're set to arrive the Monday after the convention. So we're really hoping they do arrive on time. Oh God. I've actually gone pretty hard getting a bunch of new things to display merch for the event because might as well make an effort. Don't know how much longer I'll be able to keep doing cons. I hate being in focus. So if I pull the F stop up and then I pull the ISO up, that seems bad. People already think it could be a thinly veiled way of animating a lot of different styles or feline HIV. Hang on, I'm getting a lot of... You're fine, you're fine. It's all cool now. Right, so let's, do, let's, do, let's do your ending then. Ooh, my insurance does cover this. Cool. Then we got the options there. <laughs> Thanks, so. Whose hat is that? No, oh, it's not MCM yet. I don't want... No. I'm back in the... Fucking building again! <laughs> There's only one way to go. This is a nightmare. This is, is this how cows feel? I just bought my lanyard and the staff were extremely confused why I was here buying a lanyard. They said, I'd like to get some tickets and they said, why? Because they're also like of the mindset of me of like, why would you want to be in the XL when you don't have to be? And I was like, look man, you gotta do something. It's a weekend. And Luigi are here. I've seen their movie. I'm so scared right now. Oh god. Oh god, I'm so scared. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. I never used to be able to trust a lot of like art booths at conventions because you couldn't tell, you know, what was stolen art that they just got off Google, but now you can't tell what's AI art. It's all the same stuff. It's always the same. Sonic says get your fucking eyes checked, you stupid shit. Oh my god, I know her! You're doing amazing, sweetie. I hate this place. This zoo. This prison. This reality. Whatever you want to call it. I cannot stand it any longer. It's the smell. If there is such a thing. I feel saturated by it. Your stink. <laughs> Oh man, this is not how I thought this week was going to begin. Last night we spent six and a half hours in accident emergency so that we could get some tests done and see a doctor to basically confirm that Charlie could safely stop taking a, a new medication that she was on that was causing her heart to hurt a lot and it was very scary for her. She is fine, just her body didn't agree with these meds. Ever since I did the camping tryhards, I've been able to just sit and do nothing. It was like a skill I unlocked. I used to get bored. Now, if I need to just do nothing for hours at a time, I can. I don't need to look at my phone. I can just sit and just exist. It's a weird skill to have now. I think I learned peace, basically. I think people pay money to go to Asia and meditate to learn what I accidentally did in my own garden. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I sat on you. Calm down, dude. Jesus. Look, you know me. I'm an average consumer. I've been ride or die for the Marvel Cinematic Universe since day one. They're on thin fucking ice. I'm I'm this this close from the, if the Marvels, if I don't enjoy the Marvels, I'm I'm done. I'm a fi as, as a sizable Miss Marvel fan in more ways than one because I'm fat if if this is not good I'm ju I can't I just can't anymore I will attest that just they've been churning shit out and it's just broken my little heart I want to enjoy things I like enjoying things but even I can only take so many insults as 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 a, as a media enjoyer where they're like eat your slop piggy 
Just slow down, guys. Just focus on making g good things. Plan and just stop rushing, guys. I want to have fun. It's just so little things to enjoy in life. Let me have my superheroes. <laughs> Hello. Let's go to Lithuania. No, no Jefferson. Uh, this is oh, oh, God, not again. <laughs> so about 19 years ago, I was riding that very same escalator at Gatwick Airport, and I saw a display for some clothes, namely a blue hoodie that I was like, oh, I really want that blue hoodie. Mom, can I get that blue hoodie? And she got me that blue hoodie, and that is what became the Edsworld Tom blue hoodie. That's the hoodie it was based on. And it was more of a midnight blue and it had the word animal across it, but that got lost in translation very quickly. I would give Ed the hex code for that shade of blue every episode. And every episode he would ignore me and just make it a, a much more royal blue. I'm glad he's back in Lithuania again. I promised I'd bring a friend. Here Hi, he is. I'm a friend. <laughs> you know how you just get a photo in front of a car sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have guessed? Spending six hours in an accident emergency, surrounded by people open mouth coughing, would lead to me getting a cold the second I hit Lithuania. I'm filming in Surfshark today, then I got two days of a good mention. I woke up feeling kind of okay, but then the more I moved, the more my body went, nope, you're bad, you're ill, you're, you're on your way out, buddy. I was gonna drink you the booze, but now I can't. <coughs> oh god. Oh, it's so good to be cold again. We are on our way to Surfshark, the actual. South Shock offices to shoot an ad because I thought it'd be funny while we're here to shoot at South Shock HQ. This is the only camera I brought, so hopefully it's good enough. I didn't know there'd be a fucking hill though. If it doesn't have Surf Shark, we can check its location. No, it's not like <laughs> the CEO of Surf Shark uh, wanted to be in the sketch, so he's playing an assistant, which is very funny. Shall I send in the drones? Yes, please. Apart from these tufty bits, it actually pins in. From here I see you it is. <laughs> Mr. Sir Shark is my father's name. You can call me Sir. I just did something that I haven't done since I was very, very depressed. I just spent 15 hours in bed. Here's hoping that was enough to get me on my feet for today. I had to cancel all my evening plans. We're going to go out for dinner. I never bail. Please be enough. Oh, it's all kicking off, huh? What's the gossip? This is nuts. Our card machine has immediately broken. The card machine I bought specifically for this event. This is... Oh, God. What the fuck is going on? Oh, wow, they're overhyping us. No, don't overhype me. They're overhyping? This sucks. Please welcome to the stage, Tom Scott and Eddie, Eddie Bowley! I think I'm like, I'm like 60% sure Elliot quit because he knew that if he didn't, he'd have to go on that stage and that was a lot. That was a lot. I keep forgetting that some people don't necessarily speak English very well and I speak really quickly and use loads of colloquialisms and it fries them. I need to slow down. <laughs> My ride. No. Are you ready for pink soup? My autism says no. They grow up so fast. That's my boy right there. What's he, where's he going? Nothing makes any sense. Uh, <laughs> I'm falling in a hole. Let's go. Okay. How much beer do people drink in a week? Six, so 10 of these. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. I have no idea what's going on. What's happening? Ah! We're seeing who loses. Yeah! 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 You beat the woman! I beat a woman! I beat a woman! Eddie, I'll lose!
like I've I've never won an arm wrestle in my life, and I decided to arm wrestle someone else who's also never won an arm wrestle in their life. And then all of a sudden everyone thought I was trying to prove how strong I was. I was trying to prove that I was the weakest person here. And? And I am. Ow. Ow. My nose. Uh, let's go. Yo. My boy. My boy. My nose is so intensely cracked from blowing it so hard that I have had to stop off and get nose moisturizer. Okay, it's just regular moisturizer, but I'm putting it on my nose. Oh my god, I know her. We are gonna live up to this. Yeah. <laughs> the music is just <laughs> too much. Yeah. So the story between me and Eddie is we met at, a, at an event, like one of these, um, but like a really dinky one in, in like a a room the size of this stage. Like, he was just on the table next to us. He was a really nice guy. We had a really nice time hanging out. We went home and wrote a blog post about this fucking loser next to us. And like, he found it in like an hour, which led me to co uh, coin Tom Scar's law. Anything you say online can and will be found by the person you said it about. Usually within 24 hours in my experience. This is my voice after pushing myself through a convention with a cold. I'm not doing a thing right now. This is naturally what I sound like. I hope my throat will recover before MCM in four days. Oh man. This is, this is very funny. This is what I sound like. What the fuck? So when I was in Lithuania last, when I was at the airport on my way home, I had this bread with uh, Frankfurter in it and it was really tasty. And I, was, I messaged like my contacts at the event like, hey, what's this called? Uh, this is yummy. And they were like, it is bread and meat. And I'm like, no, what, what's its name? And they were like, it's meat in the bread. When I got here, the first thing I did is I showed my, my new hand and like a photo of it. And I was like, what is this called? And they were like, it, we have these here. And I'm like, well, what's it called? And it's taken me until getting back to this airport, back to the same place to get it again, so that I can study it, because I want to make it. Why doesn't it have a name? Even the sign just said, bread with hot dog inside. No, call, call things things. Simona, 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 Simona. I'm filming in the Simona. Five Nights at Freddy's. Saw the Five Nights at Freddy's movie last night. It was cool. Very much, very much catered towards fans of the games. The scene with Matt Pat was a bit much. It's just a theory. That could have been a bit more tasteful. I prefer his, his work in, in last week, you know? But one thing that was so fucking cool about that movie was just that when it ends, the Living Tombstone song comes on. I fucking know that dude. I've worked with him. Yo, I've been in my house. Seeing someone that you know thrive is just, it's mwah. It's, it's fucking delightful. Good on him. That's really sweet. Oh God, I fucking, I don't want to do this. I don't want to, don't make me do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, Charlie. I, he's like, I mean, it's a great fucking eyeline again, but I don't want to do it anyway. I'm so fucking, I'm so fucking tired. So, I'm about to get a nice, early, responsible night before MCM, the most stressful weekend of the year, and I hear my shower dripping, so I go to turn the handle, and what happens? Fucking handle breaks. Okay, that's great. It's midnight. I don't have a plumber, and I've gone to Google, to look up emergency plumbers and every single fucking result is an ad for companies without websites and reviews written by bots and profile pictures of AI generated faces. So I'm just calling random phone numbers. I'm finding on Google and hoping one of them connects to a human being that will come out at fucking midnight because the upstairs really wants to be the downstairs right now. Now we find out if this is gonna explode. Oh my God. I don't fucking like being an adult anymore. Last night a man named Skidmarks came and removed my shower. I don't have a fucking shower anymore. My friends, my friends are here. I should have taken my watch off. Yes. We're doing it. Fuck now. Fuck. 
the things I do to make it clear how much money I want from you. Oh fuck, the doors are open. Everyone's so happy to see us. So, all right, we've just opened the queue at MCM. The first thing I've been yes. brought. Yes. 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 That's crazy. Yes. The mug from the hole. That was my favorite mug. <laughs> Fucking love it. Thank you so oh. much. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Wow, it's Marvin type. Why would you do this? Because <laughs> I'm depressed. There's a break in it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I just got robbed. Someone just said, oh, can, I, can you sign a post for me? And then I'll go pay for it. And I trusted them. And then I just watched them walk away. Lame. If you weren't doing YouTube right now, what would you be doing with your life? I, I don't know. I wish I knew, because I might do it. Oh my god, Squidge. Make sure you take a nice and slow breathing, okay? And she's been advised to take a break from the tent. Squidge, do you want donut? I have donut. Why not? Give him donut. No. It's his special day too. Jesus Christ, you're so excited about this donut. Biscoff donut. Oh wow. And Squidgy would very much like some. So Matthew Perry, star of my favourite movie, Seventeen Again, and many other things, died last night. And I found this out because I woke up to multiple condolences texts and significantly more tweets about it and it's sad but i am absolutely fucking full of dread because i have to go to a convention today i have to stand there for seven hours and meet people and i know what's going to happen today i know that every other person that comes up to me is going to give me their condolences and i don't say this lightly i think it's going to be really triggering because every time they say it i'm not going to be thinking about matthew perry i'm going to be reliving experiences that I had at MCM 11 years ago and that was very hard. Jesus Christ, that's real? It is. It, I went to a shop and I paid money to get that on my arm. Fucking hell. It's forever. Good job. <laughs> yeah. That's hardcore. One of the strangest things that happens to me at these cons, and that only happens like once a year, is when I pick the wrong dialogue option with someone it's, it's a very specific thing. It, it basically, it's, 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 you can literally see the like the the, the, the the Sims negative thing pop up above your head, uh, or above their heads even. And and it usually happens when they come up to me and they're like, hey Tom, and I'm like, yeah, that, my name's Tom, they're talking to me. And then suddenly I'll find out the hard way that they're not really talking to me, Tom, they're talking to the character Tom from Ed's World. And it's possible for me to just simply be incorrect. Like they'll be like, oh Tom, what have you been doing lately? And I'll be like, oh, I've just been hanging out. And the correct answer was like, oh, I've been playing my bass guitar and drinking uh, vodka. It's fine, and I know why it happens, but it's just, it's a very funny thing that just sometimes happens. I can't so wait to turn 30. So just try and get <laughs> I can. darker, dirty. Wait. <laughs> I, 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 I hope I go full. I, I hope I go poor Hollywood. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing, stunning. Oh no, the song's going! Oh. Ah, yeah. So MCM is over and it was really lovely. People were really nice, uh, but I'm very glad that I set the boundary that I did because people coming up and talking about grief and death, it can be quite triggering for me. It can pull me back to difficult times, especially when I was doing cons just a couple weeks after losing uh, a close friend and having people coming up and saying those things to me then and, and I powered through that and I put on a really big mask and, and, it, and it did damage basically. So I'm glad I set that boundary and I felt like I'd done a good job setting that boundary uh, and then I came home to delete those tweets because they weren't needed anymore only to find that I'd spent the entire day getting absolutely uh, dunked on. Screenshots taken and shared around being like look at this fucking snowflake making it about him. It's like that's not what I was doing man. I was just trying to set a simple fucking boundary. Now that's over, Matthew Perry is gone. That fucking sucks a lot. I was a big fan of his work. I've talked about that uh, in multiple videos, which is why so many people, you know, thought of me. But I have nothing more to say other than that, that it, it sucks and that's sad. Um, I, I didn't know him, but I, I, I just loved his his work and, and, and his acting style. You know, the sketch that I was showing at MCM has multiple beats in it that I can identifiably say like, oh, that's Matthew Perry's influence in it. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a shot where I'm like, I'm... One moment, that's him. That's that's me trying to channel him. So 
you know, I'm grateful for what he's done and, and, and the influence and inspiration he was. And it's, it's so sad <laughs> that he's gone. I would like to be remembered as somebody who uh, lived well, loved well, was a seeker. And his paramount thing is that he wants to help people. That's, that's what I want. Thank you for the laughs, Mr. Perry. See ya. Now it's time for the part of the video that everyone has been waiting for. Uh, what does Tom have to say about Palestine? I think like a lot of people, I've had the privilege to just not think about all the horrible things that happen in the world. You know, they're happening over there, they don't affect me, and I've got bills to pay, so that sucks. But obviously over the past month, this conflict in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine has just dominated social media and the public discourse and this this conflict that you know I, I've been told my whole life is very very complicated and, and full of full of gray areas has become more black and white and it has become something that that you cannot remain neutral on and I'm not neutral already because my my country is standing in support of one side of it uh, is sending financial aid largely uh, apparently for humanitarian relief but for all I know my taxes my money uh, is being spent on the bombs that are being dropped on the people in Gaza and that's uh, so I'm not neutral uh, for all I know I'm entirely complicit in, in in the current state of affairs and it just feels like we're being told and encouraged to just look away turn the other way Close your eyes, stick your fingers in your ears and go la 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 and then when you don't worry when you turn back the situation will be resolved. It won't be complicated anymore uh, because Gaza will just be gone. Is that is that alarmist? Is that uh, an oversimplification? I don't fucking know, but that's just that's sort of that's 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 what it's starting to very much seem like and I and, and, and I I can't abide by that. And, and I see so much bad faith discourse online where if you say, hey, this is bad, someone else says, well, do you, oh, so you support this? And it's like, no, obviously I don't fucking support, you know, support like Hamas or whatever. Um, and, and then you're basically cowed into just saying nothing. You say, uh, well, bad thing is bad, but other bad thing is bad, good things are good, you've said nothing, right? It's hard not to feel helpless in this situation, but obviously nowhere near as helpless as all the civilians in, in Palestine getting killed right now. So what I have done, what I, I do feel like I can do, is I've begun a correspondence with my local MP, my local politician, uh, and you know, I'm aware of his work, I think he's had a great political history, great voting record, um, you know, he even spoke out against his own party leader when it came to the the war on terror. And I've been keeping an eye on what he's been saying in Parliament. And you know, it's been fairly milk toast. You know, just fairly standard sentiments of like, hey, let's get the humanitarian aid in. Let's make sure the civilians are safe. But he has also said, I'm not calling for a ceasefire because Israel's going to defend itself. And I've said, hey, please, dude, please, please call for the ceasefire at the very fucking least. Because this is just, this is awful. And I very much feel like by standing by, we're, 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 we're landing ourselves on the wrong side of history. You know, and, and even though the history will be written by the victors, the victors that we're likely aligned with, I still think we're making the wrong call by just allowing this to continue. So I'm hoping that he does, basically. I know that earlier this month I said I try not to weigh in on issues that don't affect me, that I'm not informed on, but I've become fairly informed over the past few weeks, and also, yeah, it just doesn't feel like a situation in which remaining neutral and saying nothing is, is an option. So, you know, free Palestine, man, let them out. Fucking give them back their freedom of movement. Stop taking their fucking homes. Who am I talking to? The fucking Israeli government's not watching this video. Ah! Just feels like I'm screaming into the void. It just feels like we're all screaming into the fucking void. <sighs> Alright, just had this year's load of trick-or-treaters. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to move. Too many of those kids knew who I was. The first kid was like, thank you, Mr. Tom Scar. And then another kid just like walked up with my YouTube page over and was like, is this you? Oh. Good. <laughs> All right, well, that was October. In November, I've got two more conventions and even more deadlines. So let's see if I make any of those, shall we? Wish me luck. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you last month. Tom Scott out. <laughs> I don't know how Elliot took his voice with him, but I'll, I'll do it myself. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, 
Thank you for the money, money, hey you. Thank you for the money, hey you. Thank you for the money. This is hard, hey you. Thank you for the money, hey you. Thank you for the money, money. Uh, thank you, patrons. We appreciate it. Uh, I guess I guess I have to come up with a new song. Um, so, uh, stand by for that. Please send help. <laughs> <laughs>